Virtual Roundtable now. Joining us today, ABC News Political Director Rick Klein, former Republican Congresswoman from Virginia, and now ABC News contributor Barbara Comstock and Democratic strategist Sochi Hinojosa. Thank you all for being here. Rick, I'll start with you. How important is this speech to President Biden as he wraps up his first 100 days in office? What do you think he's looking to accomplish here? Yeah, Diane, it's a critical moment, a chance to communicate directly to the American people and at a critical time in, in terms of fighting COVID-19, uh, just around the, the, the opportunity to, to put that in the past and then to start to talk about this massive uh, reorganization of a social agenda that we're talking about from, from President Biden. Uh, the scale, the scope of what he views government is doing and doing well uh, is fairly unprecedented in, in recent decades. And he is talking about government as a force for good. And I'm told he's going to have a lot of personal language in there, a direct appeal to people about the things that government could be doing to help them live their lives, to end the pandemic, but also help their families, help them get jobs, help them take care of their loved ones. This is a bold and ambitious president and a presidency at a time of those deep divisions that we've been talking about. And, and Sochi, let me turn to you. Uh, the focus tonight, the president has said, is on, quote, the American Families Plan, as he calls it. And this afternoon over at the White House, uh, on the traditional lunch that the president has with uh, news anchors, the president told World News Tonight anchor David Muir that he wants to make his case to the American people, not just to the Republican or the Democratic Party. I was just talking about this with the congressman. He said no one thought he could unite the Democratic Party, but he did pretty quickly. So is this what Democrats wanted to see from Biden, you think, when they sent him to the White House? Absolutely. I think that what you've seen from this president is someone who did unite in our Democratic primary, and then he goes on to be president, and he wants to work with both Republicans and Democrats on an agenda that will deliver for the American people. It was unfortunate that Republicans wouldn't sign on to his jobs plan, but now we're moving forward. And I think that this speech will is not only important to look at the last 100 days and what he's accomplished, including 200 million shots in arms, checks in people's pockets, and a jobs plan, but looking forward to the next 100 days and what that looks like, and whether Republic Republicans want to be part of child care for our three-year-olds and four-year-olds and investing in our community colleges and investing in HBCUs. These are all issues that Americans care about and that Americans want from their government. So it'll be up to Republicans to see whether or not they will join the president in this effort. Now, Barbara, Biden may have Demo uh, Democrats united, but he did promise to work across the aisle and unify both parties. And we just heard from Congressman McCall. He doesn't think he's delivered on that. And looking at the record so far, we haven't seen much bipartisanship on Capitol Hill since he took office. So what do you think this new human infrastructure plan will do for that effort? And what more can the president do to try to get Republicans on board? Well, I think the sort of a compromise infrastructure plan that some of the Senate Republicans are talking about is, is a place where they could have some bipartisan agreement. That will mean scaling back on some of these things. So I understand, you know, President Biden wants to lay out a much bigger agenda. But then I think, you know, in order to get some of that key infrastructure that everyone can agree on, passing smaller pieces of that may be a way, you know, to start, you know, as he pivots from the success of COVID, which, you know, I think he has good marks on that and, and people feel good about that we're coming out of this. So having even a smaller success on infrastructure would be good. And then I also think the secondly, the criminal justice area where uh, Senator Tim Scott is working with Democrats, I think notably Karen Bass, and they seem to be working well on that. And I think that would be a really important way you could bring the country together have some racial healing, which I think the vast majority of Americans want to see. And I think Tim Scott is a great leader on that. And I, I appreciate that the president and Democrats are, are working with him on that. And I think that would go a long way. But when you turn to the much bigger spending items and even more problematic, the big taxing problems, I think that's when you're going to run into trouble with Republicans. And also, I think some of those Democrats in those suburban seats where you have, you know, those two income professionals who are in higher um, cost areas, you start increasing taxes on them. They're, you know, the higher income people voted for Biden. So if you come in with massive taxes on them and on their businesses, I think that will backfire. And I think you'll see Democrats peeling off of some of that. And Rick, uh, this is going to be a very different kind of joint address to joint session of Congress. You know, more than 1,600 people are usually in there. It's a clapping competition, or one side jumps up at every sentence and the other side sits on his hands. 
uh, but there's only going to be 200 people up there. So uh, what is it going to look like? How might it affect how the president's message is received? Well, keep in mind, Joe Biden's going to enter that chamber wearing a mask. The plan is not for him to, to grip and grin and shake hands, but I, I think we all have seen Joe Biden enough to know that it might be irresistible for him to at least offer some fist bumps or, or elbow bumps along the way. He's going to deliver the speech itself maskless, but people in that chamber are going to have their masks on. There'll be the historic difference of the two women, the two female uh, politicians from California, actually, a, the vice president and the speaker of the House, uh, right to his left and his right shoulder. But I think the, the social distancing inside the chamber speaks loudly to one of the messages that the president wants to deliver, which is the importance of continuing to be vigilant in confronting COVID-19. He knows that we're not done yet, that we've made a lot of progress over his first 100 days, but it takes the cooperation uh, and the understanding of the American people that they have to do what's right to keep this disease at bay. And I think those optics are going to be important and part of the message that, that he needs to hit home tonight. So, Chief Biden, Biden also wants Congress to act on immigration reform and gun safety. So what are you listening for tonight on those issues? Well, I'll be listening um, for the next 100 days and what exactly he will do to move immigration reform forward. We've seen a lot of polling lately that shows that Americans are frustrated with the lack of progress. And I think that progress or that lack of progress and their frustration stems from about 40 years of our leaders in Washington not doing anything about our broken immigration system. So I think what will happen is that President Biden will put forth, and it sounds like maybe not one large immigration bill, but how can we get as many people legalized as possible? And how can we fix our broken immigration system, whether it be a few bills, um, however that is. And so I think that you'll hear a lot from President Biden making his case about the issues that people care about. And that does include gun reform as well. There have been a number of shootings over the last several weeks all across this country. And I think he'll make that case and talk about those stories directly. And Barbara, uh, we're going to see a rebuttal to the president's speech. As you mentioned, Senator Tim Scott, uh, he's taking the lead on the police reform bill. And um, what do you think, for Americans who don't know him, what are they going to learn about Senator Tim Scott tonight? I was about the House member and, a, and now a senator. And he is a great leader, I think, certainly on these racial justice issues. But he's also been a great leader on economic opportunity issues. You know, he focused on those opportunity zones and and certainly was very active on the tax reform. So I do think you're going to see him focus on, you know, how tax increases would be, uh, you know, a problem for growing businesses, for increasing opportunity, and, you know, not wanting to, you know, uh, take a left turn on those uh, strong, you know, business-friendly um, opportunity issues. So I, I would imagine he will be able to offer some, you know, conciliation on where we can come together on uh, the racial justice issues, and, and I think there'll be good progress there. But then I think he will take a strong, you know, line in the sand on here's where Republicans are on, you know, not having tax increases when we're coming out of a pandemic and not hurting what looks to be a fairly strong economy. And I think President Biden will do much better if those tax increases are nipped in the bud and he'll be the beneficiary by a continuing good economy that Republicans, you know, I think will be happy to, uh, you know, continue with. Rick, on another note, federal agents searched Rudy Giuliani's home and confiscated his phone as part of the Southern District of New York's investigation into foreign lobbying. So what's the status of that investigation and where does former President Trump fit into all of this? Well, there's a lot we don't know about what they were after, and of course, we don't know anything about what, what if anything, they found on the on the in the documents and the devices that they took. But uh, this is connected to an investigation that began back in 2019. Uh, Rudy Giuliani was part of efforts uh, to to try to drum up information that could potentially be damaging uh, to to President uh, pre uh, President now President Biden and his campaign. That was the subject of the first Trump impeachment way back in those uh, in the olden days of 2019 and early 2020. Uh, <laughs> and it, Giuliani had a had a major role in. That he had said publicly uh, that he was looking to, to 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 find through business partners and other contacts information that could be used in a political context in his in his position as the president's attorney. And as I think you guys know, the idea of uh, a subpoena being served and a search warrant being served against a, a, a lawyer, uh, much less a lawyer for a former president, is uh, is pretty extraordinary. And, and it suggests a pretty significant escalation in the inquiry that's been going on out of the Southern District of New York for some time. Rudy Giuliani with an interesting year. His movie got nominated for an Oscar, so there's that too. Rick Klein, Barbara Comstock, and Sochi Hinoza, thanks so much for being here.
Thanks, guys. Good to be with you. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.